do a cat cow. So we're going to be on all fours, shoulders stacked over our hands, hips over our knees. And what we're doing here, I want you to think about shrugging up and just keeping our spine neutral. We're really just activating our scaps and shoulder blades. So you're stacked over. I want you to think about just shrugging up with your shoulders and then shrug down and really sink those shoulder blades down. Good. Up nice and tall. A good little back art. Or, uh, Good. So what's another way you can get it to say outside of shrugging? What's another way you can use? Another barbell cue. Push away from the floor? I'm sorry? Push away from the floor? Push, yeah, for sure. Round your back and arch your back? Yep. And the other thing you can do on the arching part, you can have them move their head with it too. You can have them move their head with it, right? So you can have them, when they're arching, look up, and when they're rounding, look down. Exactly. And then you're going to feel probably a little tiny bit more, especially if you want to add some flexion extension on their neck. You feel that a little bit more or same, Kyria? Yeah, more or same? When, you, when you're looking up, okay, yeah, exactly. So that's just an idea. If somebody has neck pain, I probably wouldn't do it. Just an idea. Good. All right, so let's go child's pose. It's so funny. Child's pose. Like this, you know, like this. Yeah. Like this. Sink that head through the hole, the little reach here. You really should feel that. Did you see it live? Are you crossing your legs for a reason? No. Okay, okay, I just wanted to. Comfort for me, I think. Okay, okay, oh, okay. i never seen that version before. No, <laughs> there is comfort. Probably the way I was already sitting. <laughs> <laughs> got it, got it, okay, yeah. All right, so sit back, good. Reach, good extension. Put that head through the hole. Perfect. Reach out as far as we can. Yep. That's good. So we're looking for... Yeah, so what we're looking for is to drive their chest, like he's talked about, chest through the floor, uh, trying to reach those fingers as high as you can, try to get their butt to get as slow as they can to their heels. Yep, back down to the heels as slow as you can. Um, all right, let's go bird dogs. On this, just in case you guys get confused, there's no chance that you can do same side, same same arm, same leg. Oh yeah. Okay, <laughs> same side just means do everything on one side. Alternating will be opposite every time, right? That's the only reason for saying same side. I don't want you to get confused with like, we're gonna do right arm and left leg, that's impossible. You can't really sit like that. <laughs> if you can, I don't know how you do that. All right, so bird dogs here, we're gonna start at our high. So You're gonna be on kneeling. Is it kneeling? Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, yeah, it's really easy, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Shoulders stack. Over our elbows and our hands. Hips over our knees, good. We're gonna suck our belly button in. We're gonna brace our core. I want you to extend your back leg back, keeping your hips nice and square, and you're gonna reach out with that opposite hand. Hold for a good second. Bring back into your starting point. And we're gonna do the same side. Yeah, that was good. Nice. Exactly. Perfect. Um, let's go all four scap retractions. Remember those? It's in all kneelings, too. Yes. I'm just trying to read my hand right. It's still <laughs> <laughs> I need a microscope. <laughs> You can use some of the other pages if you want to, man. Like, like tomorrow when I'm flying, I'm probably going to go through a rewrite this. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> nice. Right, there so you go. We're all fours, elbows are nice yeah, and locked. Nice. Shoulders okay. stacked over our elbows and hands. Knees over our uh, hips over our knees. Don't the shoulder attractions are really just going to think about getting that chest to the ground and shrugging it down. Pushing the ground. I want you to actually go past neutral. When you're coaching it, try to overemphasize hollow. Like you're pushing away. Yeah, you're rounding. 
and you're pulling back. You're rounding, you're pulling back. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because okay. you want to get more mobility both ways, not just not just the retraction, but also the okay. protraction. Okay, so it's protraction. Yeah, so. protraction, retraction, both ways. Gotcha. And then on this one is the one we want to be able to differentiate this from a cat cow. Right. right? We want to be able to differentiate that from a cat cow and from a, a all fours pelvic tilt. So it's three different things, right? You got yeah. all fours, retraction, protraction, right? So just your shoulders, my back doesn't, my lower back doesn't move. Then you got all fours, pelvic tilt. So my shoulders don't move, my back, my hips move, and then you got a cat cow where everything moves together, right? Everything moves together, right? So yeah, definitely good to differentiate that. Yeah. Um, okay, we got four scat. Let's go double leg hip thrust. What am I also doing at the top when you're pushing your hips off? Squeezing the glutes. Up, outside of that. If you only squeeze the glutes and you don't worry about something else, what could happen? What could they do wrong? Um, or it's making sure it's a, a core nice and tight. Yeah. That way you're not, like, you're not overextending. Yeah, yeah, exactly, okay. exactly. And then ask her where she's feeling it. Where are you feeling? <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so one big thing about this one, um, Heather, go over like if what happens if you feel your hamstring at all on this or not really? No. Okay. So a lot of people, I expected them to say their butt. They might not know where their butt is. They might get confused. The hamstring or butt. So sometimes I'll have to tell them, do you feel it here or here more? And then sometimes they'll tell me here. Okay. So what can we do to try to fix that? Yeah, you can play around with your feet, right? So bring your feet closer or further, depending if this one doesn't work. If you feel your feet closer, then try to further, right? Yeah. What's the other thing we could do? For sure, as I said, certainly if, if you put a band across their, their um, knees, you're gonna be able to get an abduction, so no matter what, we're gonna feel it through the hips. So that's an easy fix for sure. And there's one more thing we can try and do too. It's three things I usually think about. Those are the two things I think about, there's one more. The, what? Uh, you could definitely do it elevated, but that just changes elevated, the whole the whole here, exercise around. Right, yeah. I'm just talking about the same exercise. What you could do is put the heels down only. Uh, yeah, heels yeah. down only is going to focus it because you might not be applying enough pressure through your heels, and it's going to fix you easier. But at the same time, it could activate your hamstrings more. So the only yeah. one way to find out testing it, yeah. right? But that's usually what I think about is before I even bring the band, I might test the other two just because it's easier without equipment. I'll have them move their feet around. Number one, keeping their feet flat. Number two, if it doesn't work, I'll have them do this one. And if that doesn't work, then I'll put the band around their knees. For sure, as a last resort. Yeah, but I do want to constantly ask on this one because this is one of our staples on the hip thrust. I want to make sure they feel in their butt, not their hamstrings, because their hamstrings are going to come next. We're going to feel our hammies doing the hammy races, right? So if I'm already feeling my hammies and they're going to feel my hammies again, my glutes are just shut off, right? So I want to make sure I get my hammies, or my glutes, I'm sorry. All right, so now let's go hammy races. What am I going to do with my head? On the ground. That way you're not straining your neck. There you go, you go. <laughs> Good. You really dig those heels in and pull your heels towards you. Really activate and fire those hamstrings. That felt really good. There you go. Did you talk about your toes at all? I didn't hear. We're going to flex our ankles. Too. Yeah, or point your toes to the sky. That's an easier way to think about it, right? Uh, I just keep saying point your toes to the sky because a lot of people just like and point them down. Yeah, yeah like that, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So point your toes to the sky is easy to think about it other than plantar flex. Yeah. Okay. All right, Kira, go ahead and try it. 
And I usually almost always, since this goes from hip thrust to this, I almost always have the box ready. And I almost always push it so they're already lined up in 90 degrees. Right? Yep. Nice. Good. Good call. Really to the sky, the nice. Where are you feeling? Feeling your glutes? Feeling your glutes? <laughs> your glutes. Oh, wow. Yeah. You do? More than your glutes. Damn. All right, so an easy fix on this. You do? An easy, fix, an easy way to fix this is I like to start closer to 90. Yeah. We'll be pushing her further than 90. There's no chance she's not going to feel it. Go ahead and push yourself further a little bit more. I always start where you started, Brett, though. I like to start there first. Go ahead and try it now. You feel your glutes here? Something's weird. Same exact time. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah, for sure. It's got to be. It's got to be, absolutely. But I do like to start in because I like to get a close range and long range in the hamstring, so I like to vary it out a little bit, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Nice job. Um, all right, let's go sideline abduction. You can eat, teach both at the same time if you want to make it easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make yeah. a pillow with your head. Make a pillow. Yeah, yeah there you go. Exactly. Yeah, so much better. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> make a pillow. Make a pillow with your head here. Make sure our hips are nice and square. Now our hips off the ground. No, hips on the ground. Hips on the ground. Yeah, yeah hips on the ground. That's a progression thing? I mean, that's hard. Yeah, I don't even, yeah, I don't even, I don't, that's really hard. Uh, that's like almost like a side plank, but yeah. on your, yeah, that's really, really difficult. <laughs> on the ground. There you go. Yep. There you go. So what's an easy way to tell if someone's doing this wrong? They're going way up there. If they're going way up there, that means their hips are backing up. Right, so it shouldn't be a big range of motion on this. That's like that's pretty good. I would, I would, that's I wouldn't go further than that. Meaning, like I wouldn't expect her to be able to go further than that, uh, even if it's somebody less. And what do you feel it? My outside leg. The the outside leg. Oh shit. Down there. Damn. Well, I'm thinking about pointing my toe down. Okay. Okay. So let's keep going. Let's get ten. Go ahead and get ten. <laughs> so that's another thing. It's like, am I asking too early? That could be my thing. So I might wait until she gets five to ten reps on it and then ask her that. Right. All right, how about now? Still there? Yeah, it's still mostly there. I do feel it there. But you do feel it there? Okay, so we're going to try to fix this out here real quick. Go ahead and keep going. What I'm going to have you do is now instead, no, that's okay. Now instead of, so she's keeping, she's pointing her toe down, but she's not keeping her heel flexed. So I want her to pull her toes towards her face and keep pushing down on her, on her heel. Go ahead and try that now. Anywhere? Not really? Most uncomfortable with right here. Uncomfortable? Yeah. Damn. Okay. Go do the other side. I mean, I'm used to being like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do the other side for me real quick. This is the other side. Let's see how that's that one's just a fresh side. All right. So I always make sure her hips are lined up. Yep. Her hips are stacked on top of each other. You're gonna plant her flex and point your toe down. Yep. And then we're gonna keep it right on top of each other, but this way. Yeah. You see how you're pushing your heel? Your heel should be the furthest thing closer to that wall. Okay. You go, try, I'm trying to go out that high. Right there. Yeah, that there's perfect. Okay. Your shins? Okay, okay, that's fair. You're doing it right, so I mean, yeah. it might be that she's just not used to keeping her, her like that flexed. You say you're used to pointing your toes? I used to walk on my toes. That's how oh, really? Okay, so for her, this might be a big movement. So walking on your toes might be a really hard for you, too. Like you, on, yeah, I'm sorry, on your heels. You might feel that on your shins, for sure. Okay, good. All right, so let's go into uh, adductions.
leg raise with this lower leg. It's a nice small move so we're really supporting that leg up with our inside. Okay. Perfect. Touch that nice and square, shoulder square, small movements. Spring that leg over, good, get the pillow, nice. Alright, let's push down. Nice. Yeah, that's good. It's way better than mine. Yeah, we just relax. Perfect. We fought it. We got it. Nice job. Hey, yeah, good coaching. Good queuing on that. Good queuing. Alright, so why don't we carry up? We already went on the world's greatest. Let's take him through a single leg hip thrust. Uh, we'll skip the bird dogs. You feel pretty good with you guys feel pretty good with the bird dogs? Yeah. yeah, okay, we'll skip the bird dogs. We'll do an assisted upright 90-90. And we'll do all four hip cars. Okay, so we'll do those three. Single leg hip thrust. Assisted up, upright 90-90. Yep. And then all four hip cars. Alright, right. So you're gonna do an assisted upright 90 degree angle here. Keep your feet where they're at. Come up. And then twist it around. Tough on the hips, huh? Yeah. Good. Exactly. All right, so let's go over how to make this harder. That's the easiest version, right? From then, from then huh? You can take your hands away, but before you can take your hands away, you can start leaning your hands forward. So that's, that's, that's definitely harder. That's way harder. And in between would be to, so instead of having your hands here, you can have your hands a little bit more forward. And then you can have your hands more forward, right? So you can still assist yourself. And eventually, yeah, you want to go without legs, without your arms at all, right? Yeah, so you see how you were leaning really far back, now you're not. So that would be somewhere in between, yeah. getting more used to that. Yep, exactly. And then eventually the goal would be, all right, so now we're going to start leaning forward after every rep, right? We're leaning forward after every rep. Yep, exactly. You start feeling the size of your hips. And then if we're leaning forward, we're leaning towards the back uh, or the top leg. We, now we can lean towards the um, bottom leg. It's even harder. You feel a difference? It's even harder that way. So then I'm going here, I'm feeling all over this hip. Right? Yeah, exactly. And then we can also do lifts. We can go here. We go down, around, here. Right, so there's multiple ways we can go on this one for the hips. Right? Um, okay, good. Let's go single leg hip thrust. <coughs> Good. Um, on that one, a uh, good thing to think about when or look at when you're coaching would be, is that other hip dropping when the other hip comes up? So I'm looking at that hip. He wasn't dropping. I'm just saying things about think about. Uh, the closer your knees to your chest, the, the easier it's going to be. The further your knees from your chest, the harder it's going to be. So if you keep that leg straight, it's going to be really hard. If you can keep the hips together, solid, go for it. Uh, another one would be... Um, to making sure that they're not overarching the back, like I told him on this double-legged, on the top for single-legged, most people are gonna try to overarch your back to make up for the compensation of the muscle strength. Right, so you definitely wanna really think about pulling your belly button in. A variation for this one, in case that is the case, would be to go opposite side, you're gonna be here. So you stop them from overarching their back, 
by pulling this here. Right. The other thing you can do instead of your hand here, you can put a tennis ball right on your hip and have him flex that tennis ball against their hip and then keep going up and down like this. And it stops you from overarching because if I overarch, my tennis ball is going to fall out. Yeah. Right? So that's another, another couple of things you can think about on that one for sure. A lot of little details we can look at. What's that? Like yeah, yeah, it's really, it's really neat. It's, that one's called a cook hip thrust. Single leg hip thrust, but with a tennis ball. They have a name for it. It's called a cook hip thrust. Um, okay, all four hip cars. Remember that one? You're going to be face down on the ground, hands and knees. And you're going to take your hip and basically do circles with it. Take your hip and do circles with it? Yeah, so you almost like a... Uh, remember this one? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And going slow, really trying to think about t keeping tension on that knee, mm -hmm. right, without letting him hip twist his hips around, right? So if I'm going, what I, how I would describe it is, hey, we're going to do a hip car, so any kind of car is going to be your articulating joint. I want to keep tension throughout that whole movement and make a space in the joint. So I'm going to have you do, I'm going to have you start with the right leg. You're going to push the right leg up and back without moving your left hip. We're going to go up and around, trying to keep tension on the outside of the knee, all the way forward, back down. Right, all the way forward, back down. The whole time I'm pushing against my joint, and I want to feel like my joint is um, uh, being uh, pressed against the outside of, of itself, right? Once we get about two or three, we're going to go the other direction with that same leg. Yep, so you're keeping your, your tension on your left joint. That's great. And then back down, right? Exactly. How's that feel? So you want to go really slow on that. On any, any kind of car, you want to go really slow. Um, Definitely uh, on any kind of car in general, yeah, even upper body, shoulder cars, anything like that, you're gonna go really slow and you're just gonna coach tension. The whole idea is to create tension. Hey, let's flex that quad. Let's go all the, or I guess no, it wouldn't be flex that quad, flex that hamstring. Go all the way around and back and forward. All the way up, all the way around and back and forward. Right? I'm fighting the tension within myself. Right? And then this is easy to do if you do it wrong, once again. You have to over coach it. Um, any kind of car, you're creating tension within that joint itself, right? So you're pushing against nothing. You're pushing against air, but you're pushing against your own joint, right? Um, so that's the car. Um, questions on the car? No? Okay, so let's go plank the downward dog. Okay, I want you to go try to plank downward dog. Um, jealous pose. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and coach him through it. What happened? I'm trying to think of what a plank down the dog is. So you can start off with a plank. Yep. Okay. And make sure those, that elbow and that wrist is under your shoulder. What you're going to do is you're going to push those hips back and up, keeping those legs straight. Push that hip behind in between your arms. Yep. Back forward. Exactly. That's it. If they're having issues, we can put their knees. Nice. Exactly. So you're trying to keep your legs straight if you can. Um, like you said, try to push that head between the shoulders. Uh, keep going like that. What? Oh, that's okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> it's okay to say something, Taylor. <laughs> she doesn't want to be on the video. Yeah, exactly. I know. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go ahead and have you perform it. I'll see you a little bit. Oh, no, you're done for the day, right? All right, see you tomorrow then. Bye. All right, so you're going to go up into your plank form. Okay, so you want to make sure your hands are on your hips. Okay, so you're going to go up into your plank form. Elbows underneath your shoulders. Everything's tight, flat's tight, everything's tight. So what you're going to do, you're going to push those hips up to the ceiling. Bring the head down. Good. Nice. Good. We're focusing on pushing that head through those arms. Good. How did that feel? Feels good. What are some compensation patterns you might see on this? Hips up more? Uh, uh, yeah, okay. or bend your knees. Might, people might have really tight. Hips up more exactly, down. exactly. So people might have tight hamstrings, and that's okay, depending on if you want to feel it more in your hamstrings or you want to feel it more in your shoulders, right? If somebody wants to open up their shoulders, I'll let them in their knees and try to push that, sh that chest through their shoulders more. 
Um, another thing that you want to make sure you tell them is, I don't want you to go beyond the plank. So essentially meaning, I don't want your hips to drop, right, into an arch position. Right? So that's another thing. Hey, I want you to stop right at a plank level. Don't go beyond that, otherwise our hips are going to drop. We're going to start feeling lower back. We don't want to do that, right? Yeah, perfect. Um, okay, so let's go. I want you to coach her through a single leg hammy. Single leg hammy curl. Oh, the hammy lift? Yep. What's that? I thought that word said something totally different. Oh, really? <laughs> Single leg hammy lift. I wrote working leg, and I was trying to read it as walking leg. I'm like, what the oh, heck? Oh, wow. Is that? That's really different. <laughs> no chance you're going to tell difference. that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Oh man. Alright, so we're going to start close to this box. Knees under the, or over the hips. We're going to have one heel this time dug into the box. We want to dig down, pull it into us. We're going to extend that leg out and flex that toe. Hands out to our side. We're going to keep our core nice and tight with the pelvic toe. And we're going to squeeze our glutes at the top just like that. Really focus on driving that heel down and pulling it towards us so we get a good hamstring flex. Hips up, nice and neutral, right back down. Really keeping that leg straight too and pointing that toe. So that's a more advanced variation, the leg straight part. Yeah. So I, if I want to regress it, do it like, like I would pull that knee closer knee, to, yeah, yeah right okay, there. Okay. Exactly. So the more weight you have closer to you, the easier it's going to be on that left hip leg. All right. right? Okay. Try it out and see how much easier it is. So much easier. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what <am I> doing? <laughs> Push up a little bit higher though. That's it. That's your full, full flexion. Good. Good. Yeah, so it's going to be like a 90 90 on both legs. That's the easier variation. Good. All right, Kira, go ahead and try it and coach her, coach her through it. So whenever you're plantar flex, you feel it out in your shin. Uh -huh. yeah. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Okay, that's good though. You feel like hammies? I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, Kira, go into kneeling plank scab retractions. So we did scab retractions in all fours. So now we're gonna do it in kneeling plank portion. You can do it either one. Hard. Yeah, it's gonna be a little harder. You can do a plank on your, on your knees, okay? So think about where your hands are situated underneath that elbow, underneath that arm. So you're gonna keep your, those elbows straight and you squeeze that butt. What I want you to focus on is think about bringing the chest down to the ground and then pushing your chest away from the ground. All you're moving is that chest. Good, I want you to have your hips a little higher. Have my hips Yeah, higher. right there. Yeah, because you're dropping your hips, you're, you're almost like uh, extended. Am I okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's much better. You should feel more like your core is working at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. And then once, one thing on the retraction protraction, we don't want to teach them to shrug. Right. One thing is shrugging while doing retraction protraction. One thing is staying away from shrugging and pushing retraction protraction. So think about coaching shoulders away from your ears as you're pushing back and forth. Much better. You feel, uh, don't bend your elbows. There you go. Try to keep those elbows locked out. You feel a difference when you're trying to keep your shoulders away from you? Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, exactly. So definitely think about um, any kind of retraction, protraction. Not a compensation pattern is shrugging. So you want to stay away from shrugging for sure. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> So, for, uh, I mean, as I'm, let's say, you can go ahead and keep going. As I'm looking from the side, I'm looking, yep, he's 
if I wanted to put my fingers in here, I can feel him shrugging back and forth. I want you to tie it, push further, further, further. Good, and then back up. I'm also looking at him losing his core. So he might not be able to do it because he's gonna lose his core. He's not going up and down with his shoulders. I'll take that any day. He's keeping his shoulders really far away from his ears. There's a massive gap there. If I was looking at him from the side and I couldn't see his ears, he's shrugging. Like you, you have a hard time with that one in terms of like, I know when you bench press, you like to go up too. So it's just an inherited, obviously a habit at this point, which we're gonna work on a lot more. Um, that looks good. Some people, you can push them to have their shoulders further than their hands. Some people, you cannot. Exactly, in that case, it's gonna feel a lot more in the wrist, right? Yep, um, so you can be aware of that and just be, be able to, hey, keep, pull, keep pulling your belt button to your spine as you're maintaining that constant tension to your shoulders. Right, yeah, good, good. Um, okay, so we got child's pose to Cobra. Do you remember that one, Brett? How do you feel about walking in there? <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Um, so child's pose. We're going to start with our butt on our heels. So we're going to do your hands out in front of us. Just going to reach nice and deep here, keeping our butt on our heels, though. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then with the cobra, we're going to really just push forward like this, right? And then, and then we're just going to extend yeah. our back and look up at the sky. Exactly. And that, you could do, <clears throat> that's perfect. Go ahead. Sorry, are you done? Yeah. Yeah, so basically, um, you could do that. You just have to make sure you, you, you speak and say, I want you to slowly drop your hips down. You don't want to go into a hard cobra right away. You don't want to go into an arch really fast. And the other thing you can do is drop. So like, if I'm in my child's pose and I'm moving to my cobra, I can also start with a mini cobra where I have my elbows down. Right, I don't have to push away my hands. Or I can start slowly as I'm transitioning. I'm gonna start from my child's pose. I'm getting my hips up, my shoulders over my hands, and from here, I'm slowly gonna drop my yeah. hips. Okay. Right, only as slow as I can. Like right now, my hips are not touching the floor. It's as slow as I'm comfortable right now, I feel like going, right? If I wanted to get lower, I'll just have my elbows. And I'll switch to my elbows, and then before I switch back to a child's pose, I'll switch to my hands and go back into a child's pose. Right, yeah, that's good. All right, Kiria. Coach her through it. Slowly up, and then I want you right now to start dropping those hips slowly to the ground. Yeah. Really think about arching that back and look up at the sky. Thanks. Yeah, perfect. Good job. That's great. Excellent. That was All right. Slow Watch. hip drop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> good for sure. You want to want to go fast into something like that for sure. Um, let's go supine scorpions, Kiri. Remember those? Supine scorpions. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. So you need to be laying on your back. You're gonna have your hands off to the side, palms down. Okay, you're gonna keep that, keep your head, keep your shoulders on the ground. Yeah. You're gonna bring one leg over, keeping the shoulders on the ground. All the way, if you can. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. exactly, exactly, exactly. And you try to keep that leg straight coming back up, place it, place it down, yep. So, go back over there. Uh huh. Turn it over. Hey, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. And you're gonna try to keep that leg just like that coming back up to the top. Yes. Put it down. Switch to the other side. Right. So you're trying to keep that leg at 90 degrees as you're going back and forth. Because you're trying to keep. You feel your hammy, right? As you're pulling your toe up to the sky or to closer to your face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the same. Yes. Good. How's that? Yeah, feels good in your back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm really focused. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. My back cracks every time. Yeah, me too. Me too. It's great. I love it so much. All right, let's see you try it. Exactly. Okay, and you lower that 
one leg down, bring the other leg up. That ain't the water bottle. Okay. Bring it over to the other side. Yep, exactly. So most people won't know what to do with their leg coming back up. So you have to coach them on that for sure. Um, what's up? You said keep it straight and bring it up. So yeah, if you can, yeah, for sure. I mean, obviously, you, you see what they're doing. You see how far away they're from that. And if they can't even get their leg up straight, you, you might have a leg that is like this, and that's as far as they can go up, depending on the mobility, right? So you're going you're gonna to see the same thing coming back. You can't expect more than that, right? Yeah, for sure. All right, we're going to go into, we feel okay about tall plank scab retractions. Same thing as the knees, but now the feet are off the ground. Elbows are trying to be locked out. Try, once again, trying to stay away from shrugging. Let's go prone scorpions. So this one, I want you to coach prone scorpions. So the same thing we just did, but we're facing down. You're gonna bend the leg. You're gonna bend the leg. No, not that way though. <laughs> right. It's like yep. That, right? And then you're gonna bend it. You're gonna bend it. Exactly. Maybe that's why I wrote. <laughs> I can't wait to rewrite this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're gonna lay prone right here. Hands up to the side. We're gonna lift that back leg up. And we're just gonna go over to the side. We want to really try to keep our hips on the ground. And bend it. Bend it. Bend it. Bend it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, keep bending it. There. Exactly. Exactly. Go ahead. Keep going. So you can also give them a goal, right? Try to get your, your toe to try, try to touch your hand, opposite oh, hand. Man, yep. Hand. Yep. That ain't gonna happen for me. Mm, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. So where should you feel this? Or where's the many different areas we could feel this in? I mean, for me, I'm feeling it right here. In your low back. Yep. Obliques. Yep. Low back obliques. Good. You can feel that in your hip. You can feel it in your in your quad, depending on how tight you are. Right, so all those areas are okay to feel it. People are gonna feel in different areas for sure. If you wanted to, em to emphasize a specific area, you could tell them to do a specific thing, right? If I wanted to feel more in their back, I would probably have them push their hip more into the ground as they're getting their leg over. They're feeling a lot more in their back. Um, if, I find, if I want them to feel it more in their quad, I would try to bend that leg further as they're going over. So the further the leg, the more extended that quad is, right? You're gonna feel a lot more in your quad. Go ahead and try it, and then I'm gonna have Brett coach you through it. Okay, good. Yeah, see? Different areas. Feels good? You okay? <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So now we got no hands, 90-90. We talked about this one already. Just get rid of your hands. And we got tall plank spider lunges. Anybody remember that one? It's almost like a world's greatest stretch without the actual rotation. Right? Spider lunges. Is that, that's it. That's it. That's all it is. That's all it is. It's switching back and forth from that. So why don't you have Kyria coach spread through it? So Brett, you're going to get in your plank position. Okay. What I want you to do is bring one of your heels. You want to be over top of your shoulders. Yeah. So hands up underneath your shoulders. I want you to bring one of your heels over to your hand. If you can't do that. <laughs> you see how quick she did that? Yeah, if you can't do that. Can you do a split? Can you do a split, Kyria? Okay, that's, that's pretty far forward, yeah. It's pretty far forward. Yeah, no, I was going to say, most people won't even get their toe up to their hand. Bring your leg up as far as you can. Yes, there you go. That's a good cue. As far as you can. All right, so make sure your shoulders are stacked over top of your hands. Yep, good. And you're going to bring one of those heels up as far as you can. See how far you can go. There you go. That's good. That's good. Exactly. So we keep the knees off the ground or on the ground? Yep. Tight. A regression would be keeping the knees on the ground, right? If there's too much pressure on their hips. Yep, exactly. Good. 
Okay, and then switch it up. There you go, good, nice job, nice job. Exactly. There you go. Where do you feel it here? Yeah, where do you feel it most? I feel my hamstrings. In your hamstrings? Did you feel that where? In the, in, the hip, in the hip flexor? Yeah, that's fair. That's, I usually feel in the hip flexor too. The further I go forward, if I'm going to go into a split, I'm going to feel my hammy though. <laughs>